Clothed in glory, arrayed in splendor, great man is he. Yeah. Let us lift his name on high, celebrate his grace. For he has redeemed our lives and he reigns on high. Great and mighty is He, great and mighty is He, clothed in glory, red in splendor, great and mighty is He, it's great and mighty is He, singing about Jesus tonight, great and mighty is He, clothed in glory, red in splendor, great and mighty is He. Let us lift his name on high, celebrate his grace, for he has redeemed our life, and he reigns on high. Great and mighty is he, great and mighty is he. Clothed in glory, arrayed in splendor, great and mighty is He. You believe it? Would you give my hand clap of praise? Hallelujah! Great and mighty is Your name. Great and mighty is Your name. Praise God! Woo! He is great and greatly to be praised. Hallelujah! Easter is coming up quick. Amen. Let's do our part. We've been promoting the church cards. We will have some flowers put together for Saturday, which is going to be an outreach, 10 o'clock here at the church. Amen. If you can't go out with us and hand flowers to people and invite them to church, amen, if you would just come here at 10 o'clock and pray. Amen. We need some people in the house of God praying as we go forth to invite people to church. Amen. How exciting is that? Amen. On Saturday at 10 o'clock, we're going to do this this Saturday. And the following Saturday, right, right before Easter, let's get the word out about the Life Center. Amen. The Happening Church. Praise God. Friends, family, co-workers. Amen. Invite somebody from those three categories and also strangers. Everybody say 12. 12. 12 neighbors. I want you to take a flyer and put it on their door. Amen. Invite somebody to the house of the Lord. Amen. Let's have revival. Amen. Amen. Praise God. This world is in a identity crisis. And we're going to talk about that tonight and maybe for the next few Wednesday nights. There's some scriptures that I want to share with you. Uh, Psalms 139 and verse 13. Psalms 139, 13, 14, and 15. And a couple more I want to share with you tonight. Amen. Make sure that you do take some church cards with you. There will be some up here at the front and also at the back. Amen. Let's get the word out. Amen. This world needs to hear about Jesus. We have set a goal to have 200 people here on Easter, and I believe it's possible. Amen. Brother Spark said it by faith tonight to me. He said 213 in 2013 on Easter. Amen. He's daring to dream. Amen. Let it happen, dear Lord. For thou hast possessed my reins, thou hast covered me in my mother's womb. I will praise thee, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Everybody say, I'm special. I'm special. Marvelous are thy works, and that my soul knoweth right well. My substance was not hid from thee when I was made in secret and curiously wrought in the lowest parts of the earth. That's an amazing scripture. We are fearfully and wonderfully made. Amen. 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and verse 10. It's good to have Brother Puckett's daughter here tonight, Tiffany. Lord bless you and Braden. Thank you for being here at the Life Center tonight. Pray that you feel right at home. 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and 10. But by the grace of God, I am what I am. And His grace which was bestowed upon me was not in vain, but I labored more abundantly than they all. Yet not I, but the grace of God which was with me. Praise God. He said, I am what I am. 
He knew who he was in Christ. Paul, saved by grace. Darren Hutzpeth, saved by grace. Praise God. The Poland family, I am what I am. You've been saved by grace. I'm thankful tonight that the Lord, when he comes into our life, amen, we can realize who we are in him. Praise God. I'm not going to throw any fruit at you tonight like we did last Wednesday night. I pray that you're still connected to the vine. Amen. Had your attention. Amen. Don't have anything to pull out of my pockets tonight, but just pay attention. Amen. It's good stuff. Not because of me, but because of him. Let's pray and ask God to speak to us from his word. Lord, let the word minister tonight. Let it encourage Let it saturate into our minds and our hearts. Lord, more than ever before, we need you in our hearts and our lives. And I pray that your word would go forth as an encouragement tonight, as a reminder of who we are. The devil is a liar. He's a deceiver. Lord, there's been a lot of lies spoken into our minds and hearts. But Lord Jesus, remind us tonight of who we are and where we are headed in you. In Jesus' name. Praise God. Turn to somebody tonight and tell them you're a classic. You're one of a kind. Praise God. One of a kind. Woo! Specialty. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You can be seated. Amen. I am what I am. Amen. I've read about it. I've heard it spoken by Apostle Paul and also by Popeye the Sailor Man. But I believe one of them is more inspired than the other. And I'll let you decide on that. I am what I am. Praise God. I like that statement tonight. I am. You fill in the blanks. I am. We have a lot of titles here tonight. I am a son. Amen. I am a brother. I am a father. Amen. Praise God. I am a spouse. Amen. I am a preacher of the gospel. I am striving to be a prayer warrior. I am. I am called to pastor this church. There's some labels that have been put upon me. There's some responsibilities. I am apostolic. I am Pentecostal. Amen. There's some labels. There's some words that the Lord has given me. He's inspired me. But there's an enemy that comes against me and says, You're nothing but garbage and trash, and you all have a past, and you're not going anywhere. But he's a deceiver tonight, and we need to understand that the Word, amen, it ministers to us, and it encourages us. Second Corinthians 5 and 20 says that I am, I am an ambassador for Christ. That's a special person. That's a special calling upon your life, Carolina. You're not just a somebody, amen. Amen. You are a soul that has been saved by grace, and don't let the devil beat you up with your past. It's this day forward that we need to understand that I've been saved by grace, and I am what I am. Praise God. I am. What's your real identity tonight? There's people that can speak into your life, and there's examples that we can follow in this life. But I want to say it right as we begin tonight, just because your father or somebody that was above you was an alcoholic, it doesn't mean that you have to be an alcoholic. Just because somebody was addicted to drugs and you saw it, and maybe you inspired to be that way, you don't have to follow that path. Amen? You're a child of the King. Amen. God has a special place for you in His kingdom. Praise God. The first identity of utmost importance that we need to focus on tonight and understand is that I'm a sinner that's saved by grace. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. We're born into this world a mess, just as a crying baby. It's like that baby we dedicated here, Ezekiah, born into this world as a sinner. But thank God for His amazing grace. Paul said it this way in Romans 7 and 24, Oh, wretched man, am I. Oh, wretched man. Am I? And I believe that we could echo those words tonight as we understand that we all have a past. And we've heard the voice of the enemy, but we're moving forward as we strive and we, we try to get to that identity 
that the Lord has instilled into our hearts. The world you're raised in will try to define who you are, and not in a good way. It's the truth. There's ever-changing views, there's opinions, there's the voices. It can be confusing in this life. Amen. Who to follow, who to listen to, the voices, they're out there. It can be confusing, it can be discouraging. There's the illusions and the delusions of an end-time adversary that we face. Amen. He's out there. He's trying to destroy what God has put into our lives. But I want to remind you tonight that you are called. Amen. That you are separated. Amen. That you're headed to a place called heaven. Amen. That you are victorious. I am. Go ahead and fill in the blanks tonight. The Lord will help you. So many things can affect our identity. Who we were made to be. What are you striving for tonight? What are we supposed to be in life? What is my direction? What is my purpose? Maybe somebody is facing that tonight. I, I want to try to help somebody in this service tonight. To understand and to comprehend that you are one of a kind. Amen. And by the grace of God, no matter the confusion or the crises in your life, God is still in control. Amen. God's going to help you to find what you're searching for. The identity crisis. It's a time in life. When people begin to seriously search for the nature of their identity. Amen. There's some soul searching. Amen. I read a statement today and I related to it because it said some of the most important decisions are made when we're in our 20s. It's true. In most cases, it's in your 20s that some people graduate from college and they try to figure out what they're going to do in life. And we make those decisions. Vocation. Our career paths. Who are we going to marry? In your 20s, usually. Circumstances sometimes prevent that. But it's important tonight that we understand that, you know what, if I'm in my 20s, God can help me. But if I'm in my 30s and I haven't figured it out, God's still in control. Amen? And I still have my identity with Christ. Amen? I was thinking about that today. Amen? I was married by the age of 22. Correct? 22. An amazing thing. Our first child was born when I was 24 or so. In our 20s, there were some big changes taking place. Called to preach about at the age of 20. Wow, a lot was thrown in my face and on my plate. I learned in a hurry, you know what, I need to find my identity in Christ. The calling, the responsibilities as a husband and a father and a preacher of the gospel. Amen. I'm thankful tonight that the Lord has helped me with the responsibilities of life. Praise God. And I cannot base my identity on other people. Amen. I am who I am. I'm a child of the King. Amen. There's decisions that I've made in the past that I wish I hadn't made. And you have the same testimony. We learn from our mistakes. But don't let the devil beat you up about it. Amen. It's a new day and it's a new season. I am... What I am. Praise God. Nobody else is like me. I'm one of a kind. Thank God. Praise God. Driving Mr. Albert is a fascinating book about Thomas Harvey, the pathologist who performed the autopsy on Albert Einstein in 1955. Does anybody remember that year? A few amens. It's pretty bizarre, the story says, but Thomas Harvey kept Einstein's brain in a Tupperware bowl in his home for 40 years. His brain, Einstein's brain, became the locus of Harvey's identity. One of the interviewees said, said that the brain is his entire identity. And I wondered aloud, why would a man want another person's brain sitting in a Tupperware in his house for 40 years? Was he hoping that that wisdom and intellect would rub off on him? If he sat about long enough that he would have all of the, the thinking and the smarts of Einstein? I don't know. I'll let you fill in the blanks. But I can tell you tonight, amen, we can't base our lives and we can't strive to be like other people. Amen? Now there's some good morals and character that we can glean from people. But you know what? You are special. You're one of a kind. Amen? Don't put somebody in your life and just strive to be like them. We must be like Jesus. Amen? To find our identity, it has to go past a brain and a Tupperware. 
I hope nobody else is doing that. The loved one in your family. But it's a true story. Puzzling, but true. Don't base your identity on other people, whether they're dead or whether they're alive. Praise God. Think about it tonight. There's nobody like Einstein. There's nobody like Abraham Lincoln. There's nobody like Apostle Paul. There's nobody that was like Peter. And there's nobody that's like Mark Moorefield. He's one of a kind. He said, thank God. Praise God. We're pressing forward tonight. Amen. Your self-concept is the way that you see yourself. It's determined by what you base your identity on. And we have a lot of choices here tonight. All the church said amen. It can be based on the way that you look tonight. It can be based on whether or not you combed your hair or not. For those of you that do have hair. It can be based on tonight your identity by the clothes that you're wearing. These young people, it's amazing. There's certain clothes they have to wear. It has to be the certain name on the front. Hollister. I wear a Hollister t-shirt. I'm in. In my day and age, it was O.P. and Hobie and Izod and Polo. And if you didn't have Levi 501 Blues button-fly jeans, you were not in. You had an identity crisis. But isn't it amazing? I don't have any Hollister t-shirts. I guess I need to get some. But everybody goes through it. What are you wearing tonight? The brand of clothing. Our concepts. We are identified by the clothing we wear. The way that we look. And the car that you drove to church tonight. Whether it's a Mercedes or a Ford Pinto from 1975. There's an identification that people put upon you. It's a part of living as we try to figure out why am I here in this life? What is the meaning of my life? Lord, where do you want me to go from here tonight? Anybody ever feel that way? You just have an identity crisis? You leave Sunday night and you get to work Monday and the week starts and you try to figure out what in the world's going on and you're crying out for mercy like Onovan's doing tonight? Identity crisis. The Lord is here tonight to help us because you are fearfully and wonderfully made. Praise God. I'm thankful tonight that he's still in control. Albert Einstein said, I guess this was before the Tupperware situation. He said, there are only two ways to live your life. One is as if nothing is a miracle and the other is as if everything is. You're not an accident. You're a miracle. Amen. Formed in the hands of God. Jesus is still the author and the finisher of your faith. Does anybody believe this tonight? If anybody's puzzled or confused, you need to look to Jesus. He is the author and the finisher of your faith. There's no confusion on his part, Tim. He's made you. He's created you. You're special. There shouldn't be an identity crisis in our life. Praise God. The devil failed, and he wants you to devil was cast, cast out of heaven. He was kicked out. He was the worship leader. Ezekiel chapter 28, you can study this, this topic. It's an instant replay of exactly what happened. Ezekiel 28. You can almost detect a touch of regret in God's voice. He said, I ordained and anointed you as the mighty angelic guardian. You had access to the holy mountain of God and walked among the stones of fire. It was Lucifer who led worship in heaven. But it was Lucifer who had pride and rebellion that came into his heart. Lucifer had everything going for him. He had the power. There was some authority there. But enough, enough wasn't enough. There was the eternal challenge there. There was a lot going for him, but he wanted more. He was reaching out for more. And he made the, the mistake of trying to to be lifted up higher than the Lord God Almighty. Amen. We can talk about an identity crisis where we don't have anything in this life. that We're just trying and striving to find ourselves. But then there's the other level. A heavenly level where we rise to the top. And there's pride and there's rebellion that can get within our hearts. And there can be an identity crisis that can form in our hearts. Whether we're at the bottom of life or at the top. It's important tonight that we strive to please Him. Amen?
that we honor Him, that there's no pride that gets in my heart as the Lord blesses me with material things and possessions and titles and, and prestige. Be careful that you're not lifted up like Lucifer where you fall on your face and you're kicked out of the heavenlies. Amen. I don't know about you, but I want to possess a humble spirit before the Lord. I want to come before Him tonight. Amen. I want to make sure that there's no pride or rebellion in my heart. I want to make it to heaven. Praise God. In spite of what the devil did, and in spite of what he says tonight, of calling you trash and a loser and a no good, amen, the Lord has called you to greatness. There's an identity that He has given you that we should reach for. Praise God. Identity problems are simply the byproduct of basing your identity on the wrong thing. How many people do you know that's in that situation? Basing their identity on the wrong things of life. Watching the example of other people. Striving to be like them. Praise God. Tonight it's important that we understand the Word. Hallelujah. The Word of God. I am what I am. Praise God. I am what I am. This scripture in 1 Peter amen, 2 and 9. Amen. It applies to what we're talking about tonight. We're, try, we're trying, we're striving to find our identity. Praise God. This one says it just about as clear as it can be said. But ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people that you should show forth the praises of Him who hath called you out of darkness into His marvelous light. Out of darkness into light, which in time past were not a people, but are now the people of God, which had not obtained mercy, but now have obtained mercy, which in times past we were not a people, but thank God He's called us. Thank God for that holy calling tonight. Thank the Lord for the identification with the cross, with the nails. I'm glad tonight that I am a chosen generation that I'm a royal priesthood, that I'm a part of a holy nation, a peculiar people. Praise God. You're peculiar tonight. You're one of a kind. You're a classic. Amen. Go forward and do great things for God. He's on your side. He loves you. He's reaching for you tonight. There's not an ID problem with God. He knows who you are. But yet the youth of America, the greatest fault, I believe, is the imitation of the stars. The imitations of Hollywood. Amen. I don't know all the new singers and all the new stars, but things that I hear and see in my limited um, electronics and world out there, there's some names that I know that young people are looking at, like Pink. And maybe a few years ago, Britney Spears and Justin Bieber. Is that the way you say his name? People looking up to these young stars. They're striving to be like them, trying to sing like them. Beyonce, is that the way you say it? Bianchi, whatever. Beyonce. They're striving to be like them. It's the truth. Amen. There's an imitation that's going on. Sing like them. Dance like them. Dress like them. You'll have success. You'll be a star. Give your body to the world. Drink everything you want. Forget about this body. What? As the temple of the Holy Ghost. Are you crazy? It's the message of the world. An imitation is not the way to go. I want to strive to be like Jesus. I want to hear the Word of God again that says this temple is the temple of the Holy Ghost. And there's certain things that's not going inside this body. I choose to follow Him and to be like Jesus. To identify with the cross and the church of the living God. Ralph Waldo Emerson said, There's a time in every man's education he arrives at the conviction that imitation is suicide. He must take himself for better or for worse. I love that. That's a powerful statement of Brother Ralph Waldo Emerson. Imitation is suicide. Amen. I know that when we grow up, we want to be like a certain basketball player. Man, I thought I was the second coming of Larry Bird when I was in high school. My goodness. I thought I was Troy Aikman. 
throwing the ball. Shoot, why are you laughing so hard? <laughs> Amen. I know those moments come in our life. But there's a point that I understood I can't throw a ball like Troy Aikman. And I can't shoot the basketball like Larry Bird. And I can't do this and that. But I'm going to do what God has called me to do. And I may not be the best, but I'm going to strive to give my all for the Lord. There was an identification that came into my heart as I understood I'm a child of the King. And the Lord wants me to preach the gospel. And He wants me to, to live right. And He wants me to imitate that which is good and holy and righteous. The Lord wants to do the same for you. For better or for worse. Whatever condition your heart is in tonight, just give it up to Jesus. And say, Lord, I desire to be more like You. I am what I am. I've been saved by the grace of God. Hallelujah. Can we lift our hands and thank Him tonight for the identification that He's given us as a child of the King, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. I thank You for Your Word tonight. Thank You for the identification that we have in You, Lord. I thank You, Lord, that there's not an ID problem with You, Lord. Make all things real. Thank You, Jesus. You are fearfully and wonderfully made. Hallelujah. Just follow His voice tonight. Follow the leading of His Spirit. There's great things in store for you. Hallelujah. It was David. I believe I mentioned this in the past week. 1 Samuel 17 and 38. It was David that was dressed in some armor. It just didn't fit him. The helmet was put upon his head. The breastplate. The sword was put into his hand. You see, arm in a warrior in biblical days was a major ritual. Armor was an extension of the warrior's character. His character. Saul didn't understand that, you know what, David's not used to carrying around this big old sword and having this big helmet on. David had a calling. He had a label of a shepherd. Not necessarily as a soldier, putting on all of this armor and picking up this heavy sword, but he was a shepherd. He was fully armored and he was fully armed by Saul. One commentary said, I think David would have lost because David wasn't a swordsman. In fact, he had probably never touched a sword in his life. 1 Samuel 13 and 19 says, Not a blacksmith could be found in Israel. Because the Philistines said otherwise, the Hebrews will make swords or spears. So all Israel went down to the Philistines to have their plow shares and their mattocks and their axes and sickles sharpened. On the day of the battle, not a soldier with Saul had a sword or a spear. Only Saul and Jonathan had them. A sword. David was a shepherd. But you know what? David was deadly with a slingshot. He was deadly with a slingshot. You put a slingshot in his hand, game on. He went running to the giant, Goliath. There was no fear in his heart. He knew in the past, you know what? This weapon's worked for me before. And God is on my side. Amen. David decided to be David. John decided to be John. Mark decided to be Mark. Brother Craig decided to be Brother Craig. Amen. You're one of a kind. And we have one thing in common tonight. We have the blessings and the power of God Almighty upon our lives. Don't try to be somebody that you're not. Don't try to dress yourself up with things that you're not comfortable with. Take what's worked for you before. That's the weapon of prayer. It's the Word of God. Amen? It's fasting. It's worship. It's praise. Pick up the slingshot and understand that you still have the power to be an overcomer. Does anybody believe that tonight? Praise God. We're finding our identity tonight. Hallelujah, Jesus. Praise God. The deepest form of despair, warned Soren Kierkegaard, is to choose to be another, another person other than yourself. It's so true. Be who God has called you to be. There's a calling on your life. 
there's an unction of the Holy Ghost here tonight. He's reaching for somebody. Amen. You've had your head in the sand for too long. The ostrich spirit. Amen. It's time to get your head up. And say, you know what? God is still on my side. I'm still a royal priesthood. Amen. I don't have an identification problem. The Lord is still my Father. Amen. The Holy Ghost is still with me. Hallelujah. Praise God. One more example tonight. I've shared this, this with the staff of the church about Shamgar. Shamgar. His definition of success would be do the best you can with what you have where you are. Shamgar. Praise God. His name is mentioned in only one verse of Scripture. But that Scripture, it speaks volumes tonight. He's a biblical footnote, so to speak. Shamgar! But he ranks as one of Israel's most overlooked and underappreciated judges. Judges 3.31 says, After Ehud came Shamgar. Everybody say Shamgar. The son of Anath, who struck down 600 Philistines. Woo! He was a warrior. What did he have? A bazooka? An M16? A Bowie knife? What did he have? Let's read it a little closer tonight. Shamgar. He had no armor, no military training, no weapons. All he had was an ox goat. Anybody have an ox goat in their garage? An ox goat. That was his weapon. It was a long stick that was used to prod oxen while he was plowing. But it was an extension of his hand. It was something that he was used to using. Amen. It was, it was powerful. Amen. He was familiar with it. And 600 of the enemy fell to that ox goat in his hands. Use what the Lord has placed in your hands, church. The Word of God. Everybody lift your Bible up if you have it tonight. The Word of God. Amen. Use it. Raise it up as a banner in your house. Understand that the enemy still can be defeated by the Word of God. Understand that prayer is still powerful. Amen. Maybe all you have tonight, it doesn't seem very, well, overwhelming and intimidating. But you just need to speak the name of Jesus. And the devil needs to understand tonight that it just may seem like a small instrument in my hand. But devil, I'm coming against you in the name of the Lord. I know who I am in Christ. I am what I am and I'm going to overcome. Hallelujah. Shamgar, all he had was an ox gold. But he did the best that he could with what he had. Praise God. Use what the Lord's given you. It's more than enough. Faith. We've got faith here tonight. Amen. I don't care how big the mountain is. I don't care how discouraged you are in this service tonight. I don't care how many lies that the devil has filled your mind with. Amen. If it's just an ox gold, if it's just an ounce, if it's just a mustard seed of faith, it's more than enough to overcome the enemy that's coming against you. What he's given you is sufficient. Let's stand tonight. All the widow had was two mites, but she gave everything that she could give. All the young boy had was five loaves and two fish, a sack lunch. But Jesus used it to feed 5,000. It may not seem like a whole lot. But just take what you have and say, Lord, here it is. Hmm. I've listened to the lies of the enemy long enough. I've wrestled with my identity. I've strived to be like a friend that seemed to have it all together. But he's just nothing but a drunk. He's nothing but a druggie. It's a dead-end street. The way of the world. Hallelujah. I want to challenge somebody to come to this altar tonight and say, you know what? I'm tired of messing around. Hmm. I know I'm a child of the King. I know that you've called me and you led me to the service for a reason, Lord. Praise God. I'm chosen. I'm royal. I'm holy. I'm peculiar. In times past, we're not a people, but now. Woo, we're the people of God. Hallelujah. Fearfully and wonderfully made. You are special. 
You are one of a kind. Don't let the enemy beat you up. Woo! Keep coming to church. Keep coming to prayer meeting. Keep worshiping the Lord. It may seem like a simple ox go, but I'm telling you, it's more than enough. Hallelujah. Is there somebody here tonight that would like to come forward and say, Lord, I just need a word from you. Hallelujah. I need you, Jesus. Wrestling with my identity, Lord. Just trying to find direction in my life. And I need you, Lord, to reach down into my heart. Lord, I've heard the voices of the world. I've looked at the stars. I've looked at Hollywood. But I know that that lifestyle, it's not the answer. Lord, I want to turn to you tonight. I want to give you my heart. Lord, I want to follow you. Surely there's somebody else here tonight that would want to come forward and pray. Say, Lord, I need you, Jesus, to work on my identity. I need you, Jesus, to help me through this time in my life. Jesus. Lead me, Lord, as I will follow. Lead me, Lord, I will go. You have called me, and I will answer. Lead Lead me, Lord, and I will go. Lead me, Lord, I will follow. Lead me, Lord, I will go. You have called me, and I will Lead me, Lord, and I will go. Lead me, Lord, I will follow. Lead me, Lord, I will go. You have called me. And I will answer, lead me, Lord, and I will go. Lead me, Lord, I will follow. Lead me, Lord, I will go. You have called me, and I will answer. Lead me, Lord, I will go. Lead me, Lord, I will follow. Lead me, Lord, I will go. You have called me, and I will answer. Lead me, Lord, I will go. Lead me, Lord, I will follow. Lead me, Lord, I will go. You have called me, and I 
will answer. Lead me, Lord, I will go. Lead me, Lord, I will follow. Lead me, Lord, I will go. You have called me, and I will answer. Lead me, Lord, I will go. Lead me, Lord, I will follow. Lead me, Lord, I will go. You have called me, and I will answer. Lead me, Lord, and I will go. Lead me, Lord, I will follow. Could we sing it to the Lord? Lead me, Lord. Lead me, Lord. I You have called me, and I will answer. Lead me, Lord. Could we sing it from the bottom of our hearts? Oh, Jesus. Lead me, Lord. Lead me, Lord. I will follow you, Jesus. Lead me, Lord. I will go. Lead me, Lord. Lead me, Lord. I I, can we sing it to the Lord? Lead, Lead me, me, Lord. I will follow. Lead me, Lord. Lead me, Lord. Lead me, Lord. Lead me, Lord. I, I will, will go. go. You have called me. He's called you by name tonight. I will, I will answer, Lord. It's lead me, Lord. Lead me, Lord. I will, I will go. go. Thank you, Lord, for leading us and guiding us tonight. Me, Lord, Thank you for helping us to find our identity. In Jesus' name, we want to follow you, Lord. Lead me, want to be led Lord, of you, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I will go. You have called, you have called me, me, and I will, I will answer. Lead me, Lord. Lead me, Lord. I will, I will go. I will go. Hallelujah. Let's thank Him for His Word tonight. Thank you, Jesus, for the identification that we have with you. Thank you, Lord, that we are the called. Thank you, Lord, that you've called us out of darkness into your marvelous light. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You're special. You're one of a kind. You're fearfully and wonderfully made. Don't let the devil beat you up with his garbage this week. Praise God. Listen to the voice of the Lord. Rebuke the voice of the devil. There's a great future ahead of you. Amen. Move forward in Jesus' name and understand. Amen. And it's from the Lord that you gain your true identity. Praise God. Lord bless you tonight. We love and appreciate you. Bring somebody with you to church on Sunday. Let's pack this place out. Amen. Let's move forward. Let's go beyond. He's a rewarder of those that diligently seek Him. Amen. Have a blessed rest of the week. And we will see you on Sunday, the Lord willing. And the creek don't rise. You're dismissed in Jesus' name.